glad that our speaker today is uh, Ms. Sheila Maybe Olibos. Sheila is a botanist and a conservationist working as a field researcher and coordinator of the Philippines Biodiversity Conservation Foundation Incorporated, which is based in Bacolod, Negros Occidental. She obtained her BS Biology degree from the University of Philippines, University of the Philippines Cebu in Lahog, Cebu City. At the PBCFI, Sheila conducts flora and fauna research, biodiversity monitoring, training, and organizes community-based livelihood projects. Her field experiences include hornbill counts in uh, Balinsa Sayao Twin Lakes Natural Park, Northern Negros Natural Park, and Mount Canlaon Natural Park, and some fern surveys in Mount Canlaon Natural Park as well. She has uh, participated in a biodiversity monitoring program in the Negros Island Geothermal Production Field and the Flora and Fauna Survey uh, in Hamindan, Capiz. And before the lockdown, she was lucky enough and managed to do a floral inventory of the habitat of the Sulu hornbill in Pangliba, Sugala, in Tawi-Tawi. So everybody, let's all welcome Ms. Sheila May Olimpos. Sheila? Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Yes. So um, I'll start sharing my screen now. Yes, please. So thank you for that um, introduction, Sir Florante. And also, um, I'm very thankful for the UPLB um, Museum of Natural History for giving me this opportunity to share to you guys um, the story on how we discovered this new lipstick vine species from Panglima Sugala, Tawi Tawi. So once again, I am Sheila Olympus. You can call me Sheila from Philbio. So, okay. So have you ever tried Googling what Tawi Tawi is, where it is located? Um, and in oftentimes, if you, yung unang lalabas, the search engine mo talaga is that these articles regarding Tawi Tawi, that there are rebels, there are encounters, there, there's kidnapping. And even when I told my parents and friends that I will be going to Tawi Tawi, the first question that they asked me was that, is it safe there? Um, how can you assure us that you're gonna get back safely? Ano yung gagawin mo doon? Kasi, kasi nga, Ito yung mga articles that we often see. But little did we know is that in the southern tip of the Philippines, may isang, Tawi-Tawi is a small island. Ito yung last um, province um, in our country. And this is the home to the world's rarest hornbill, the critically endangered Sulu hornbill or Tausi as what the locals call them. Also recently, there's some good news coming from Tawi-Tawi na merong new um, record of otters that were found to be, um, to, be, to be playing around the island. So this is, um, this is what we don't know usually. Ito yung mga articles, mga good news na hindi natin usually nakikita sa news about Tawi-Tawi. So, what makes Tawi Tawi nga ba extraordinary? First, in terms of fauna, in terms of wildlife, Tawi Tawi is part of the Sulu faunal region together with the Sulu Island. So, many of the taxa are derived from um, Mindanao Island. Pero because of its proximity to Borneo, may mga species and wildlife that have Bornean origin. Katulad na lamang nitong Sulu hornbill, which is yung closest relative niya is the black hornbill from Borneo. Also this one, the second picture, this is a slow loris that can only be found sa Tawi-Tawi um, uh, its Philippine distribution is only Tawi-Tawi, but is widespread sa Borneo. So because of the isolation ng mga islands, 
it has a high concentration of endemic. But what is sad is that we only know um, we only know a little information about these um, endemics. So in terms naman of flora, which I will be focusing in this talk, yung historical, um, yung tawi-tawi is considered as one of the important plant areas sa ating bansa. Um, and this is a priority site for flora conservation. But as you can see, the history of botanical explorations in the island um, in 1926, it was uh, the last comprehensive account of the flora of the island was written pa way back 1926 by Merrill in which he only recorded 27 species of plants. This was then followed only by occasional collections the latest being in 1994 as part of the Philippine Plant Inventory Project. So if, if you dig into herbarium specimens, makikita mo that there are um, collections by Gaerlan and Sagkal um, way back 1994. That was like 27 years ago as part of this inventory project. Nga. And then after that, hindi na nasundan yung mga um, flora expeditions sa island. So as you can see, um, yung political instabilities, yung conflicts, and um, yung mga insurgencies in the island has greatly hampered the progress of research and conservation doon sa Tawi-Tawi. But what is more alarming is that yun nga, mataas yung concentration of endemics doon but majority of the forests in the island were logged between the 1960s and the 1970s. So only the municipality of Panglima Sugala and Languyan have um have become uh have become the had the largest concentration and yung Panglima Sugala um had the highest chunk uh, had the biggest chunk of the forest. Pero Nakakalungkot lang because as you can see sa map from the globalforestwatch.org, yung Panglima Sugala has experienced a great three cover loss for from 2001 to 2019. So eto na nga lang yung may pinakamalaking forest but then um, it, has, it had experienced pa a decline. So you can really see na there's an urgency to conserve the, the remaining forest and the wildlife sa Tawi-Tawi before, it before it's too late for us. So to address this issue, um, in 2019, you, um, our hornbill experts, our local stakeholders, the local government of Panglima Sugala, the Philippine Marine Corps, the... Um, the forest rangers, or as we call them, the Tausi rangers, and uh, other academes sa Tawi-Tawi uh, um, joined together to create this Sulu Hornbill Species Conservation Strategy and Action Plan. So this is a 10-year plan para to conserve the Sulu Hornbill and its remaining habitats. So this has become the Bible for the conservation doon sa Tawi-Tawi kasi nakasaad dito yung mga programs, mga priority um, activities, mga targets that are needed para to ensure that there will be no decline of forest and the Sulu Hornbill population would be intact sa Tawi-Tawi. So in this um, conservation action plan, Dito, um, it is included yung Project Tausi or the Sulu Hornbill Expedition. So kasi para makonserve natin yung Sulu Hornbill, kailangan we need to understand its habitat, we need to confirm its presence there, and um, we also need to involve the community kasi who will, they're the best, um, they're the best people para magprotect ng ng kanilang forest. So what we had in mind when what we had 
or what we wanted to achieve is that we, in this expedition, we want to get the population estimate of the Sulu Hornbill to um, check the conservation status of the forest in Tawi-Tawi and as well as to update nga, the flora and fauna data um, of the island. Kasi nga, um, as you can see, yung literature has been very outdated na. So with this in mind, our adventure to the southernmost province of the Philippines began. So luckily, before the world experienced the lockdown, um, from January 28 to February 7, we were lucky enough na nakapag work pa kami sa tawi, -tawi. So this is our team. Um, kami, uh, composite team is kami. We have experts that are doing research on birds and bats and herbs. And me, um, ako yung um, the one doing the flora inventory. So most of us in our group are really first timers sa Tawi Tawi. So um, nung nalaman namin that we will be going there, I felt excited and anxious. Um, both um, excited and anxious kasi excited because not everyone is given the chance to go to Tawi Tawi to conduct research. And then, um, kasi nga kulang sa data, so every observation, every um, data that we will that we will collect is very vital in establishing the database of Tawi Tawi. And also anxious then, kasi it's a new place for me. Uh, I'm thinking, um, how how will I how will I get through the 15 day na field work namin, and then and then how to adapt when then with their culture kasi nga iba you're expecting na iba, iba na yung ano dun eh iba na yung culture because that's the southern tip na but then um but then i will tell you later kung paano naman na tagumpayan namin so our site was in the upper malum watershed in barangay magsagaw panglima sugala so we only were allowed to survey around 60 hectares of forest. As you can see sa map, etong dot, eto lang yung na-survey namin na area. And then relatively, malaki pa yung area ng upper Malum watershed. The reason behind that is that because of security purposes, we were only told by the Marines na, um, we were oriented by the Marines na meron kaming grid lamang kung saan pwede kaming mag-survey. And we cannot go beyond that. So they were very strict. Kasi um, when we go to the forest, may kasama kami marines. And then may GPS ano talaga sila. And then if we go beyond that, um, pinasabihan talaga kami na we need to go back because that's like beyond the allowable area that we were, um, the, the allowable area. So, ayun, um, Upper Malum Watershed is a lowland forest around 135 to 182 meters above sea level. So, the trees were around 10 to 15 meters tall. Meron ding mga towering as tall as 20 meters. And then, some areas have this um, rocks na limestone yung substrate. So, the dominant trees include ilang-ilang. Um, we also have the balete trees, the nutmeg, and takip asin, and other pioneering species that are from the New Ferbiasi family. So this is what our day looked like. So maaga pa kaming nagsisimula at 3 a.m. Um, we are already awake because the Marines would fetch us in our in the place where we stay together with the Tausi Rangers, and then we travel travel for about about two hours to Barangay. So, eto yung sasakyan namin. These are the rooks, is what they call it. Tatlong rooks yung sumusundo sa amin. So we're like a huge group of thirty people, and then so this is um obviously not taken during three a.m. because may araw na. Pero ito yung, ano namin, ito yung service namin. The Philippine Marines were very generous to have landed 
to us. And then um, our sampling would start at 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. So unlike our usual field work where we camp out the forest, this one is we weren't allowed because nga of the for security reasons. So we had to make the most out of our day from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. So our um, this includes sampling for birds, reptiles and amphibians, and plants. So um, there were limitations um, for the reptiles and amphibians na group kasi nga they were sampling um, during the day in which dapat gabi sila magsample. But then, you know, um, we had to make use of the time. So, and then, by 4 p.m., kailangan na namin bumalik sa place where we stay. And then, in, um, hindi pa nagtatapos yung work namin doon because um, our samples that we collected from the field, we need to process them, we need to preserve them for further studies and for documentation. So during sampling pala sa plants, what we do is that we scout for flowering and fruiting trees sa forest. And then we get a branch of that na make sure na merong live, leaves, merong fruits and flowers. And then we take um, photos and every detail of the plant kasi important yun for the documentation and for the identification of the plant. So we use the power of our cameras and then um, after that, we preserve it in um, ethanol and also um, for further studies and for further verification. So we were, um, this is what our day looked like for 10 days. And on our fourth day, a mysterious lipstick vine appeared. So as we were walking sa forest, we saw this plant, this red plant sa forest floor. So immediately, we know na, ah, this is a lipstick vine. So it's a vine. So we um, looked for, for it. Now, saan kaya nang galing tong flower na to? So since it's a vine, nakadikit siya sa tree. So we were looking using our binoculars. We were scouting saan kaya, anong, saan puno kaya siya nang galing. But then, the day ended, pero hindi namin siya nakita. Pero our group was still hopeful because it's okay, we still have time, it's still our fourth day, we still have um, six days left, ba? So we were still hopeful that time. The following day, our group got lucky, lucky question mark, because we found the vine but it was on a towering 20 meter tall balete tree, which was impossible to climb because we would not want to risk the safety of our team members to get that plant because it, it would endanger the life of our field assistant naman if aakitin yung 20 meter tall na tree. So parang kami, hmm, bakit, bakit kaya... Ano, bakit kaya pinakita sa atin tong lipstick vine tas andun pala sa napakataas na puno? Baka ayaw niyang magpa-describe. Baka it just wants to be noticed. Ganon. Um, so that was on the fifth day. So we only have five days left. And then as days pass, hindi na namin nakita or we haven't seen another lipstick vine na pwedeng na, na very accessible to us. So we were slowly losing hope na sige, hindi na siguro natin yun makikita. Maybe the next time we go back here in Tawi-Tawi, doon na, siya, doon na siya accessible for us or makakollect na siya namin. But then, our group got lucky because on the eighth day of our sampling, we found two flowering individuals of the vine on a fallen tree at around 165 meters um, elevation. So this is, I, I, we, we were very lucky kasi on a fallen tree pa namin siya nakita, which did not require us or our guide to climb, and then very accessible lang pala siya. So nagbunga yung pagsascout namin na, nasan kaya yun? So we were, we were um, this lipstick vine did not, um, escape our minds talaga. So all throughout the, the sampling days is 
na nasa isip talaga namin, nasa na kaya yun? Nasa na kaya yun? But then we got lucky on the eighth day. So just to give you a background, lipstick vine is from this from the genus Aeschinanthus. So may nakita kong comment dun sa Facebook na lipstick vine, if you're a plantita and a makeup enthusiast, this plant is for you. Kasi nga, ano siya, a combination of plantita and makeup enthusiast. So it came from the word Aeschinine, or, or, which means shame, and anthus flowers. Shame because yung most of the flowers are colored red and when you're when you're ashamed you get to blush kaya um Aeschinanthus or yung yung genera, genus name niya so its distribution includes india new guinea solomon islands southeast asia southern china and sri lanka so the philippines has 30 species of Aeschinanthus and all are endemic so when comparing it to our um, neighboring Southeast Asian nations, yung Pilipinas yung may napakaraming species. And because Malaysia has 15, Thailand has 20, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam has 18, et tayo, 30 species. And lahat yun sa Pilipinas lamang makikita. So the most recent um, edition of the Lipstick Vine was published in 2001 pa. That was 20 years ago by Mary Mendom. And yung, um, she described two species from Palawan. So napaka, ano na, napaka tagal na yung last na new discovery of Asian Antus. And then what is ano, sad is that Yung etong genus na to, despite the high endemicity in the Philippines, is that it receives less attention. Um, yun, because the descriptions of the existing lipstick vines in the Philippines are incomplete. Yung mga voucher specimens were um, not updated. Yun um, so, kalangan talagang may magtrabaho sa Asian Antus. So after 20 years, we found a new um, lipstick vine. But then the question now is, is it really a new species? So that was just our ano, hypothesis na new species siya. So we need to take um uh we need to take steps to know if uh if bago ba siya or hindi. So what we did is that we compared it with closely related species. So um, during well, when we were in the field, we took morphological um, observations, measurements, and then we compared it with the closely related species dito sa Pilipinas. And also we considered Borneo, given nga the proximity of Tawi-Tawi to the island. So we checked um, protologues and herbarium specimens para to make sure that um, our our plant does not match what is um what are uh, does not match the existing Asian anto species in um so um after that we so what we did na is we made a table um bakit ba um stating why is it new we compared it and then we sent it to experts to verify our hypothesis. So it's very important to seek their help kasi sila mismo yung nakakaalam um, if it is indeed new. So after they have seen it, they, they nag-comment sila on, on how we should do it, on some revisions and changes, and then we wrote the manuscript. So this is one of the hardest part kasi um, it takes so much time, and but then, um, kailangan yung we need to state the diagnostic characters of the plant, the complete description, the conservation status and notes. So it's it's ano, it's really um uh it it would seem a daunting task, but very fulfilling naman. So we sent it after na meron coming draft of our manuscript. We sent it to Phytotaxa. 
fight attacks sa na journal, international peer review journal. So my co-author and I, Jason, um, nung nala, we were both very nervous kasi parang um, this is something new to us. So even submitting the, uh, even clicking the submit button, kinakabahan kami. And then uh, if we receive notifications from Phyto Taxa, parang uh, an- ano kaya, ano kayang comment nila sa manuscript namin. So at first, it was accepted, but major, with major revisions. So we were kind of lost kasi Um, I we thought na we did our best. We did, we 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 wrote it um well for us, no. But then we still had um to revise it based on comments ng editor and the reviewers. So we were happy and angry at the same time. But then um dun nga sa mga mistakes mo sa mistakes namin dun kami mas naglearn. and that we know better because of it. So after a year of pabalik-balik na revisions from the editor, finally our article got published um, last um, last February. So ito na yung article namin, um, Asianantus regiae, a new species of lipstick vine from Tawi-Tawi, Philippines. So it's available sa Phytotaxa, but then um, it's not open access kasi. But if you want to get a copy of this, you can message me on Facebook or email me and uh, me or Jason. And we will we are very happy, we would be very happy to give you a copy. So Ishinantus regi, a uh, new species of lipstick vine after 20 years. So it resembles um, Ishinantus obconicus from Borneo and Ishinantus ovatus by having an ovate leaves and dense indumentum in the external calyx and corolla. So I will elaborate on its um, uniqueness later. But then yung etymology niya, kung bakit regiae, is that it was named after Reggie Sahali General, who initiated biodiversity conservation programs in Panglima Sugala. So Miss um, Reggie is the first female vice governor sa ARM before, that was ARM pa. And then through her commitment and political will, she won the support of locals for the conservation of the remaining forests. So because of Miss Reggie, Um, she was instrumental in establishing the, uh, organizing the Tausi Rangers, the Tawi Tawi Advocates for Wildlife Support Initiative. Yung forest ranger doon, she was instrumental in the group na ngayon is nagkakandak na ng regular monitoring sa forest ng Panglima Sugala and, um, and they do the, the hornbill count na doon. Because of it, na organized niya and they were they are now um, under the local government and they receive monthly allowance para doon sa pag monitor so we decided that um a Asian and strategy is under the data deficient category sa IUCN because nga we only saw two individuals doon sa 60 hectares na forest so that would be ano that would be very Um, not conclusive pa of its um, conservation status. So for now, we place it under the data deficient. So what makes Asianantus regia unique? First, its leaves has persistent pubescence or hairs. So um, I just put hairs here because hairs are used for um, mammals. hindi siya ginagamit sa botany. So, pubescence is the right term. As you can see, medyo may mga, may mga buhok-buhok siya dito. So, that's one um, good uh, indicator kasi other lipstick vine species have smooth lang na leaves. Second is the most, um, one of the most defining character of Asian Antus regiae is its campanulate or bell-shaped na calyx. with dense indumentum or hairs, quote-unquote hairs, 
in its external and internal na surface. So as you can see, this white part, the calyx, is filled with hairs. And then if you um, open it, meron ding hairs inside. So its external and internal surface have this hirsute indumentum. And lastly, um, sa cross-section niya, you can see na yung disc niya, this structure that holds the ovary, has a weakly toothed disc. Meron siyang um, mga crenations na very shallow lang. And then this ovary, as you can see, meron ding mga types of hairs or mga ciliate, glandula, glandular ciliate na type of indumentum or hairs. So yun yung nakakapag-unique siya. Uh, that's what makes it unique with um, its closest um, species from Borneo and the Philippines. So just to give you a um, brief na, um, overview of the results that we had uh, sa inventory ng flora is that we recorded 63 families of plants from 134 genera and 181 species. So yung expedition naman has added a total of 101 species sa tawi-tawi flora. We um, recorded 22 endemics, um, 9 threatened species in which 2 are, this is based on the DNR um, list, by the way. So we recorded 2 threatened species, 4 na vulnerable, and 3 endangered. So this includes yung mga dipterocarps that were only found in Tawi-Tawi. And also, we recorded um, two new country records um, for Tawi-Tawi, for the Philippines rather. So we have the Clarodendrum pygmaeum and the Pigonia dimorpha, both of which were, both of which are from Borneo, but then dito sa Tawi-Tawi lamang siya nakita dito sa Philippines. So, These are some um, shots from the field. So, ito yung field. And then after the, our 10 days na field, we presented our results also to the local government and the local stakeholders, the preliminary results, and also to the Philippine Marines para alam din nila kung ano yung nangyari all throughout the 10 days. So, but then... Um, tapos na yung preliminary na ano namin, survey. What's next for, for us or what's next for Panglima Sagala? So, Phil Bio has forged partnerships with USAID, the local government, the Bar Menre, the Philippine Marine Corps, the Los Angeles Zoo, Virginia Zoo, and North Carolina Zoo. Also, sa ASEAN Center um, for Biodiversity, and most especially sa Tausi Rangers, to continue on with the monitoring and conservation activities doon sa site. So, with funding support from them, um, we will be continuing on the capacity building, training doon sa locals on how to conduct biodiversity monitoring, and also conservation awareness activities para sa pag-maintain ng forest doon. So, dito makikita natin yung very dedicated natin na Tausi Rangers during their um, hornbill monitoring last October 22 to 24, 2020. So, this is during the pandemic na. So, the road there seemed impassable because of the heavy rains that persisted um, for, for a few days. But then, you can see na nagtulong-tulong talaga sila para ma-pull yung sasakyan na naka, nalubog yung kanyang tire to, for them to be able to conduct the um, hornbill monitoring nga for the Tau C. So, but because of the pandemic also, it has been challenging for us kasi nga the, the um, funds were that the funds that were supposed to be allotted for the conservation have been diverted for COVID relief um, efforts. So, dapat babalik pa kami um, on the March 
uh, last March 2020 sa Panglima Sugala. But then because of COVID, hindi na kami nakabalik and the funds had eventually been diverted. So, but we're still very hopeful naman na matatapos din itong pandemic and we can continue with our um, projects there. Pero you, we would really want to salute the Tausi Rangers kasi intermittent lang yung signal doon and ang yung internet connection. But then they, we, they still reach out to us and us also, we reach out to them na if they need any technical na support para doon sa pag-monitor nila. At continuous naman yung monitoring nila, which is really good to see. So some key takeaways for this new for this discovery of our team. Siguro um with this discovery, I hope that it would shed light to um more conservation studies sa Tawi-Tawi kasi nga napakaraming kailangang pag-aralan, napakaraming endemics that were overlooked for a very long time doon and it needs um urgent conservation in, um attention also through this um discovery we hope that um this will rekindle interest sa pagstudy ng lipstick vine na genus dito sa Pilipinas kasi tayo yung may pinakamarami but then we are far behind our neighbors kasi may mga updated literature sila on Asian anthus but then us um we're still working on it and then we just hope um i just hope that with this discovery the the people sa panglima sugala the local government the community there would take pride in this kasi this is a result na sa pagprotect ng forest nila because they were able to protect it in a way may mga new discoveries na um may mga new discoveries of plants and possible other animals doon sa kanilang forest. So I just hope that this would inspire them to be more involved because um, after all, a very successful or the best conservation programs needs active participation from the community itself. So with that, um, I am ending my presentation here. So, maraming salamat, or as they say in Tausug, magsukul sa pakikinig ninyo sa story on how we unbox this lipstick vine species. Thank you! Yes, thank you very much, Ma'am Sheila. Oh. Yes. Thank you very much for your story. A very exciting and inspiring story. Uh, especially, sa kumbaga... It's a journey that uh, I, I believe many, many of us here, especially in the audience, uh, would like to have someday, especially if you're a conservationist or a botanist. And uh, malayo talaga yan, yung tawi-tawi. And of course, congratulations dun sa inyong discovery. And Thank for you. 20 years, to wala, nang, wala pang na, they discover it na lipstick fine. So I am... Yon, and I'm inviting everyone to uh, ask Sheila some questions or provide some comments uh, addressed to her or to her team. Uh, we'll just wait for for someone to throw in the first question. Okay. So, uh, ako, ang tanong ko ay, well, um, we know that part of your expedition was uh, funded by USAID, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, in the past, kasi may stigma yung, you know, uh, overseas development assistance, uh, especially from the from the Americans, no, United States, dun sa ating mga insurgency uh, stricken areas. So, so um, do you have any experiences with the locals uh, with regards to that? Meron pa bang mga, you know, stigma? And uh, may antagonistic behavior pa ba sila from people na, although we know wala naman, wala naman kayong kasamang mm -hmm. foreigners, right? Wala, wala. Uh, kasi for security reasons. Pero uh, any antagonistic behavior of the locals towards you and the and your and the whole team? Um, 
and uh, have you seen any you know what are the measures that the the whole program did what the organizers did uh, for for you as uh, expedition members uh, to have for the people or for the locals to have you know confidence okay so um unang una po wala po kaming na experience na yung antagonistic the locals were very welcoming na po they were um they were very curious mm. they were um on the first day siguro parang you know um we, you're we are trying to establish pa the atmosphere but as the days pass they have they they started asking questions kung kung ano um they started asking questions no na, nagiging curious na sila on what we do mm -hmm. why we do this ganon so you can see talaga na um na ano na yung mind nila mm -hmm. but um they were very welcoming na um even na uh, after um after work nag they they still come to our the place where we stay and help pa they they help us na to process the specimens mm -hmm. and then ano sila um very on time uh -huh. so uh, um kahit na alam mo yun pagod kami from the pagod kami from the field work the 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 day before they will still they're still very on time and then ano um naging friends namin sila eventually that after the expedition we still keep in touch with them they would still take photos nga of birds or flowers and then send it to us and um ask us um of its id ganon so that's a good sign na parang na stir up yung yung mind nila with that and then what we did before the expedition happened yung preparations talaga took us years um uh it started 2017 five i'm not mistaken preparations with the local government um, meetings with the philippine marines and then yun nga instrumental din yung local government kasi sila yung nag-organize doon sa local communities so if you really need to win the support of the locals you need to tap the local government kasi nga um sila yung they're under the local government eh. so mm. ayun um important yun and kailangan lang talaga ng very um ano very extensive na coordination and also let them understand why you do this kasi yeah. all the more na they will be very proud of what they have if they know na natatangi pala yon okay so uh, from um, Noli Molina i think th this is just a comment so congrats po ma'am please continue discovering new species and promoting the conservation of our natural resources so god bless so another comment lisa marie p10 at gmail.com i think this is ma'am lisa paguntala oh, hi ma'am lisa okay so yun nga um she said that preparations oh, for the expedition started in 2017 so mm -hmm. i think um, that underscores the importance of social you no know, social preparation Yes, uh, hindi tayo basta basta pumapasok no okay. especially we need to respect po their, their ano boundaries and culture especially we need to be culturally sensitive also yes. so do sa mga gustong pumasok sa ganyan larangan i think uh, uh, you have to prepare yourselves no pagdating chat uh, we have a question from miss uh, Michelle Alejado uh, ayun okay Michelle may live question tayo I, I think you have wala kang sound. Ayan. Hello. Good morning, Ma'am Sheila. Congratulations. Thank you po. Good um, morning. My question, um, do you have any plans to deposit your collection in a herbarium, particularly at the Museum of Natural History? Um, because I was also there um, way back 2018 um, to um to document indigenous foods and i agree with you that there are so many um things to be documented there so that's my question do you have any plans to deposit your collections at mnh thank you um thank you ma'am yes ma'am um definitely uh we will give copies to the national herbarium and then the kahop and uplb but 
um, pinaprocess po po namin kasi yung specimens namin were dried sa um, University of San Carlos with the help of Sir Val Salares. And then, abutan na yung lockdown doon. So, para, so we need to go back there and, um, you know, segregate the specimens and then ship namin sa um, different herbaria sa, dito sa Philippines. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, a comment from uh, Jenan Liana. So, she, congrats again and power on. Timing ka ayo for the International Women's Day celeb. Oh, happy, <laughs> happy International Ay, oh, Women's oh, Day. I, I, was it? I think it's it was today or last. Or no, it's the International Women's Month. Month, actually. yeah. Uh -oh. uh, okay. So, any more questions? Uh, may tanong ako actually. Eh. Ayun, meron ba kayong like... Uh, mm, during the length of your expedition, meron ba kayong uh, like a, a, a training component? You know, um, teaching the locals also to do or at least uh, understand by doing also what you are doing. Like, uh, hindi lang yung rangers, but the, you know, the immediate locals. Uh, may ganong component ba yung program? Okay. So during the expedition, yung mga nakasama namin is yun po yung mga rangers. Mm -hmm. um, so sila, naturuan namin kung paano, gumawa, paano yung mga field sampling techniques, why we do this, ganon. Pero dun sa um, locals mismo, I think you're referring to the ones na nag uh, Yes, yes. Uh, yung hindi rangers, di ba? Mm -hmm. um, hindi pa po kami nakaproceed with that. Although what we did nga po is we, um, we shared our preliminary results doon sa mga locals. But then when it comes to training, yun po yung mga next steps na gagawin namin. That's why continued po siya kasi um, may mga programs pa na dapat gawin. So any more questions from the audience? Uh, we still have time. Okay. Questions pa? pa bang mga questions na pwede natin dyan. You know, kakatuwa, no? Kasi lipstick buying. Kaya pala unbox. Kasi unboxing, no? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yun nga, yung sabi nga ni Ma'am Jen na magandang timing talaga. Especially daw, no? International okay. Women's Day celebration. Um, okay. Um, were you able to... Uh, parang naalala ko yata, may mayroon silang protocols for your documentation when it comes to sensitive areas. Uh, how does it differ kung yung alam mo, yung normal natin na documentation which which we get uh, usually uh, we take photos of the uh, the the general environment uh -uh. Uh, of course the specimens uh, pero meron na bang mga restrictions in terms of you know taking taking documentation videos of uh, people the locals uh, yung mga ganun meron bang ganun dahil uh, particularly sensitive itong itong area. Mm, wala naman po coming restrictions when it comes to yun nga po taking photos of the area or ganun. Yung only restriction lang po namin is that we were only limited to that certain area because mm -hmm. nga po of the grid kasi yun lang po yung area na na scout talaga ng marines na mm -hmm. for us it is safe. So ayun, wala namang restrictions when it comes to other documentation. Yeah. Meron lang kasi ako naalala. We ha I had some friends na they were doing some uh, GIS work for a, a company and they, they brought drones. So nagpalipad sila uh -huh. ng drones. Ganun. And then uh, timing lang, siguro meron silang na meron malapit na kampo doon ng, ng insurgents. So nakuha oh, yung okay. <laughs> nah nahiram yung kanilang, ano, yung kanilang gamit. So, ah, okay. Oh, oh. Nahira mo yung gamit. So, uh, I don't know kung ano na nangyari doon sa kanilang mga drone, pero um, uh, as long, wala naman nangyari doon sa, doon sa group. Pero yun nga, um, you know, drones are expensive and they can also be used for oh, oh. surveillance. So, ayun, uh, did you employ yung ganong technologies? Oh, we did not fly a drone po. Pero hmm. I think that would also be, ano, um, not ano not permitted because uh, uh, nalagpas po kasi yun eh. So, yes, yeah, so ayun. baka mamaya mm -hmm. ma-shoot down na lang yung drone nyo. Oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, from Marihina Altamirano, what is the potential for domestication of, of that lipstick vine? 
uh, as, or, as an ornamental plant uh, given the current craze for ornamental. So from Ma'am Regina Altamirano of UP Visayas Megao. Um, hi, Ma'am Regina. Thank you for your question. So yung lipstick vines, they were they are really ano, known for their horticultural and ornamental na value, no? Um, so meron talagang potential itong new species, but then we must take into consideration kasi nga, di ba, naging hype yung mga tao, yung naging plantita, plantito because of the pandemic. But um, in being, let's be responsible plantitas and plantitos we should take in consideration na hindi dapat natin ipatronize yung poach plants which were illegally collected sa wild. One thing na kung gusto talaga natin um, maging business or kasi we also promote, di ba na, dapat we should um, have native plants or um, sa garden natin instead of those the ones that are introduced. So yung isa sa nakita ko in Thailand ay eh, um is that naging business nila yung yung orchids nila but then it has this may mga permit sila when collecting so well so what they do is that they secure a cultivation permit and then um they're only allowed to collect a um, certain number of individuals and then dinadala siya sa nursery na legal and then dun siya ibebreed so yung yung cultivated na na plant is that's the one na binebenta na sa market. So you don't need to poach every time you want to get or you want to to sell a um a species of plant. So I think that would that's that is that would work for us here. So kailangan lang talaga mo orient yung mga tao on what's the proper way to do it para hindi naman maubos yung wild natin na uh, species or kasi di ba may implications din yun when it comes to genetic if um if uh we we always get wild plant plants from the forest so ayun po um ano ba pwede ba siya mag interbreed yung for example itong itong species ng lipstick vine with the other lipstick vine uh-huh. kaya ba siyang i you know i variegate yun ba yung yeah uh, c- can it be done but, Yes po, kasi yung plants are very prone sa interbreeding mm-hmm. naman po, generally. Okay, so, so I, I guess uh, tama din yung idea mo. No? Kasi um, although I, hindi ko rin maisip kung paano magpo-poach ng, ng, ng plants from tawi-tawi. No? Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not familiar with that. Pero yun nga, as a livelihood uh, you know, opportunity, pwede nga yung sinasabi mo. No? It's mm-hmm. like... Uh, pang lima sugala could be a site for a, it, it's like a, probably a local breeding center Mm-mm. you know where in you produce your F1 and yes. then yung mismong LGU ang maglalabas okay. ng lipstick vine na to mm-hmm. other localities or you know to Uh-oh. commercial so, commercial uh-oh. ano uh, growers parang ganun okay. lang siguro so what you're selling is the cultivated one not the wild one na directly from the forest oh, kasi otherwise it Ano eh, mag-promote kasi siya ng poaching eh. Yes uh, po, the, yan po yung isang, it, it has, the, the plantitas at plantitos has given the, a light to plants nga po sa mm. plants. Pero yun nga po yung naging problem kasi may mga super addict na mag-collect ng plants yeah. na the more rare it is, the more endangered it is, mas gusto nila kasi nga they're collecting. They're, yeah. It adds value to their collection. Lalo na ngayon kasi ano, parang, Uy, may bago. Galing pang galing pang tawi tawi Baka mm-hmm. makakilala kang pwede maglabas dyan. <laughs> something, mm-hmm. like, something like that. We hope so, yun na. nga po. Um, I hope, ano, um, yung mga participants here are very mm-hmm. aware of that. Na i-report niyo po sa um, agency or sa kinauukulan kung may ganun. Kasi kaka-describe pa lang ang ano naman if mawala siya agad. Baka bukas, may, baka bukas meron niya sa Quezon City. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, from Ma'am Lisa, um, what are your thoughts in sustaining the long-term conservation of the remaining area considering that majority of the remaining forests is outside the forest land and access to the site requires resources? Okay. 
So, to sustain po siguro the long-term conservation, no, given na outside siya sa forest land, is that, ah, kasi po, I think um, Ma'am Lisa is referring na yung site po kasi is like a conflict area. May mga conflict areas doon sa land claims doon. Um, doon sa area where we where we um, stud- studied or where we surveyed. So, I think to sustain this um, conservation, kailangan po muna i-settle yung, yung claims kasi yung pinaka very way, a very good way to sustain it is maging, um, maging incorporated siya sa local ordinance or sa um, law doon sa Panglima Sugala. So, I think it needs na kailangan mag-set down yung owners and then yung local government to settle this and to make it um to make it a critical habitat or, or of some sort para meron siyang legal protection it's binded by the law so um kailangan siyang i i follow talaga ng mga tao doon thank you thank you ma'am she thank you ma'am lisa for that question uh, we have a question from tita ami luna so congratulations ma'am she Uh, your study area is considered a second growth forest kasi nagkalaging noong 1970s. So may uh, she's asking if you have encountered or documented any lowland dipterocarp species or any commercial tree species in your study site. Okay. So um meron po coming na encounter na dipterocarp but then po we were kasi on, during our visit, wala pong flowering or fruiting na dipterocarp. So, um, we just initially ID'd na it's a dipterocarp. But to be certain of its um, species, kailangan po namin yung ano niya talaga, fruiting and flowering na specimen. So, meron pong mga dipterocarp doon. Um, the, um, and then, uh, dipterocarp or notus is one na dipterocarp na sa tawi-tawi lamang naki- makikita. So we were uncertain if if that that tree is that species. So it needs further ano pa, uh, verification on that. And then marami pong mga commercial tree species naman on our site um, kasi uh, it's a secondary growth forest din naman. And then also mga food plants din na, that are very big na from the Miliasi family If you're familiar po with the uh, chisoketon, meron din pong ilang-ilang. We were very um, surprised na yung ilang-ilang po pala is one of the food plants po ng Sulu Hornbill. Kinakain po siya. And then meron din pong mga nutmeg doon from the Miristikasi family na food plants din ng mga Sulu Hornbill and other bird species po. And uh, I guess... Uh, what is your timeline pagdating po do, dun sa producing that uh, inventory or checklist of the food uh, sources of the Sulu Hornbill? Um, what do you mean po? Like yung next step? Oh, uh, yung pagdating. Kasi di ba nag-survey kayo? Along uh-huh. with, with the, with the uh, account ng yes, na- remaining hornbills, uh-huh. uh, meron ba kayong ipuproduce na like a uh, checklist or uh, inventory na you know, uh-huh. pictorial guide? Yes. So the next step po is yun nga po, um, we would uh, produce mga IEC materials for that and then um, isa din po sa tinitingnan namin is that Um, we have already identified yung mga trees important for Sulu Hornbill. So we have already tagged them. The next step po is to get the seeds from those. And um, and um, hopefully, yung mga seeds will be uh, igipag-grow po siya sa nursery. And those trees then mismo yung gagawing um, seedlings that will be replanted po for the forest. Para in a way, um, same species po yung So, hindi kami mag import yes. Parang ganun po for the reforestation program. Po. Yeah. And, and ano, ako baga uh, science-based yung pagdating mm-hmm. dun sa inyong 
uh, reforestation uh, strategies na gagawin nung, nung LGU. No? You know, uh, making okay. sure that uh, the ones that are being planted are the ones that are needed by the needed. Uh, the Suluhorn Bill. Especially na um, yun yung kumbaga, you know, no, mo, uh, main point of entry nung, nung program, nung biodiversity conservation program dyan sa Sulu uh, sa panglima uh, sa Gala. Any uh, any more questions from the audience? Uh, okay. So, wala, wala na po ba? Okay, so uh, probably it's time to, to wrap up. So, maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you everyone to all our audience who participated uh, during this uh, uh, MNH Biodiversity Seminar on uh, Lipstick Vine at Boxed after 20 years. And of course, we would like to thank Mom Sheila, uh, Sheila May Olympos for being our resource person today. And Congratulations on the discovery. Congratulations to your team, to the whole team for uh, discovering this uh, new species of uh, uh, enigmatic uh, plant species. No? Magandang maganda talaga siya. Okay. Thank you. Po. Thank you. And uh, before we, uh, we end our program, let me just uh, quickly uh, get the link to the evaluation form. Okay. And um, let me, oh wait, so as a matter of tradition, let me present this, uh, you know, virtual, virtual certificate of recognition to our speaker today. Uh, the Museum of Natural History awards this uh, Certificate of Recognition to Ma'am Sheila May B. Olympos for serving as a resource person during the 2021 Eminish Biodiversity Series seminar entitled Lipstick Vine Unboxed After 20 Years, held today, March 8, 2021, from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. In witness her of the signature of our director, Dr. Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez, our director, is here unto affixed.